All righty, so we are ready to get started. Um, before we begin, I just need to say that I presented this webinar yesterday, and of course, silly me forgot to record it. So because I promised so many students that I would send them the recording, I am going to re-record the presentation, so I'm gonna go back through it. No biggie, I got plenty of time, just working from home anyways. So before I jump into the interesting adulting topics, I would like to introduce myself. If I can get my slide to advance. My name is Brittany. I am the College Transition Retention Coordinator for Missouri College Advising Corps. Um, Missouri College Advising Corps places recent college grads into high schools around Missouri um, to serve as college advisors. So I work with a lot of the college advisors um, from different high schools, from St. Louis, Kansas City, Southern Missouri. Um, but my job is a little different. I help students after they graduate. So once they graduate high school and are transitioning to the next part of their life, I help them out. Um, a little bit more about my background. So I'm a Mizzou alum. I graduated from Mizzou for undergrad and grad school. I have a master's in social work and a master's in public health. Um, about, I really want to say it was like two years ago, I kind of got into running. So I've become, become kind of a runner. Um, this streak is definitely wrong because it was already wrong yesterday. So it's still wrong today because I completed another run today. Um, if I look quickly, I could probably figure it out. So let's see. I'm not going to do that to you. Um, it's probably like about a 38 day run streak, but I set a goal to run uh, about a mile every day for 30 days and I've completed that goal and just decided to keep going with it. So we'll see how far I can get. Um, but I kind of like running, so um, it's something different. But I'm kind of a weird person, and I'm sure my um, plans will change. I'm always changing up my fitness plan, but that's kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm also a huge musical theater fanatic, so I love, love, love musical theater. Love listening to the soundtracks, love going to the shows. It has been such a bummer to not get to go this summer um, because everywhere's been closed. But you'll see pictures here of the Muni, which is in St. Louis, which is kind of where I'm originally from outside St. Louis, but I call it St. Louis because everybody does. Uh, and then you'll see pictures of the Starlight Theater in Kansas City. So my significant other is from Kansas City. And I live in Columbia, so I live in between the two. So I get to go to both, which is great. Love outdoor theater, um, but I also love indoor theater. I got to go to New York a couple years ago and I got to see a show on Broadway and it was amazing. Um, I've seen shows at the Fox also. Um, Kaufman Center, I'm coming for you. Haven't seen the Kaufman Center show at Kaufman yet, but I love musical theater. Um, a little bit more about like my college life. So I took out student loans in undergrad and grad school um, and I'm still paying those off. Uh, I'm not that far removed from school. But just so you guys know, don't necessarily be scared about taking out loans. Um, it can be scary to have debt. I know a lot of students don't want to have debt. I totally get that. Um, but student loan debt isn't necessarily the worst kind of debt you can have as long as you're responsible. Now I don't have like $100,000 in debt. That would be irresponsible. Um, so make sure you know like what your threshold is, but if you have questions about loans or taking out loans or repaying loans or anything of that nature, um, text me, let me know. I'm also a huge coffee lover, so it's funny because I'm actually still drinking my coffee right now. And we're going to talk about coffee later because when you go away to college, if you're not someone that drinks coffee, you might start drinking coffee. And if you are someone that drinks coffee, you might need to find a way to make it more affordable. So we'll talk about coffee later. Um, but I've been attempting to adult since about 2009. So since I, I've pretty much worked a job since I was 16. So I kind of think that's the threshold maybe of adulting, but I've been really working at it for a long time. Um, I put attempting because I think adulting is something you're, you're always doing. You're always learning new things. Things are always changing. Um, so I don't think this is something you can ever like, there's no master level adult. I mean, maybe I guess like when you're super old, like maybe my grandma um, is a master level adult, but adulting is something you're just always kind of learning and growing, um, getting to know new things. So I'm going to hopefully get you guys off on the right foot today with some tasks that I think are important for young people to know, um, but know that there'll be other things that come up, things will change, um, especially right now, things are always changing. So just keep that in mind. We are going to gain a base understanding of credit scores and credit cards. I'm going to go over a few roommate tips, some good stain removal tricks. Um, we'll talk about budget tips and strategies. So you will get to learn a little bit about um, budgets, which I think is super important. Um, we're going to go over a few basics of car maintenance. So I think um, a lot of young people might not know exactly how to keep a car, especially if you've never had one or if you don't have one or if your dad's always done it for you or your uncle or your mom or whoever. So we'll get to do that. Um, we are going to review a sample fall bill and learn how to pay bills a little bit. 
Um, I know fall bill might not be something that pertains to everyone if you're not college bound for the fall, but we will talk a little bit more about other bills. Um, we're gonna know the proper ratios for brewing coffee, so that can be very important. And we'll talk a little bit other ways about coffee too. And then not listed, not listed, not listed here, we are gonna talk a little bit about maintaining your health. So um, I think a big thing of adulting is just getting to be a healthy you and I mean, surviving as a person. So we'll talk a little bit about maintaining your health, particularly when um, you might be moving away or um, taking more charge of your responsibility in your life. So to get started, we will jump right into credit scores and credit cards, super exciting. For those that don't know, a credit score is a number that lenders use to kind of decide how likely it is that you're gonna pay them back on time. So it's really just this like number that predicts the likable, likability, the likelihood, that's the word I'm looking for, the likelihood that you'll pay them back on time. And some different things factor into that. So for instance, debt, types of accounts, late payments, age of accounts. Um, there's a big one I'm missing here. I'm trying to think of it. I can't remember off the top of my head. Whew. This is going to be rough. Um, but who might want to see your credit score? Landlords, student loan companies, lenders, banks, utility companies, collection agencies, government agencies, and creditors. So the reason a credit score is important is because you're probably not going to live on campus all four years if you're moving away to campus, or you're probably not going to live with your mom and dad for the rest of your life. If you are, great for you. I wouldn't recommend it, but if that's what you want to do, go for it. But eventually you're going to move out and you might need to rent somewhere. And a lot of landlords will look at your credit score and they might approve you for the property or not approve you for the property, um, for the host, for the home. Um, so you'll want to make sure you have a good credit score. Student loan companies sometimes look at it. So if you um, eventually need to take out private loans, student loan companies will look at it. And if you have a bad credit score, they might up your interest rate. Same for like lenders and banks. Um, utility companies. So when you do eventually move away, utility companies will a lot of times look at your credit score and see um, how likely it is that you're going to pay for your water bill on time, your electric bill on time, all that good stuff. Um, so it's just really important that you have a good credit score. Um, your age of accounts, so for younger people, our age of accounts isn't going to be very long because you probably haven't had a credit card your whole life because that'd be weird. One-year-old babies don't need credit cards. But um, that doesn't factor in as much. The ones that really are going to factor in are like your total debt and your late payment. So you really need to make sure you're making payments on time for things. Um, and it's not just credit card payments. So make sure you're paying your rent on time, your bills on time, your loans on time, all that kind of stuff factors into your credit score. Now, a credit card is basically just a card with borrowed money. So this is money that you pretty much get to use. It's not, it's almost kind of like a loan if you think about it, um, except for you just always have it. So it's not like you're always having to apply for a new loan, um, but it eventually has to be paid back. And a lot of times it'll have interest. So if you let your um, credit sit there, for instance, and you're just making minimum payments, you'll have to end up paying interest. Um, so there is a limit. A lot of times it's uh, 250 starting out or 500 starting out. Um, and sometimes they offer rewards. So credit cards aren't all bad, especially if you are good about paying them off. You can get rewards like cash back on things like dining out or gas or groceries or things of that nature. Um, um, but one big tip is you should always pay off your entire bill to avoid interest from accruing. So for instance, if you have a credit card and you just use it for gas, let's say you go and pay for gas, it's 20 bucks, you use your credit card, then right away I would get on your app or whatever, a lot of credit card companies have apps now, and pay it off immediately from your bank account. Um, that way you're not getting any interest. You don't want to turn that tank, that $20 tank of gas into $25 just because you used your credit card and forgot to pay it off. Now, if for some reason you have a credit card for emergencies and you've got to max that credit card out and you can't pay it off right away, that's okay, don't fret. You can make minimum payments. You will end up paying some interest, but at least that emergency situation will be covered. And I think credit cards are important because they do help instill some financial responsibility. So keep that in mind. Um, something I like to tell students is that credit card companies a lot of times target students. So you might start getting things in the mail about signing up for this credit card, that credit card. Don't feel pressured to sign up for them. Um, if you really want one, you can, but look into all of them, read some of the fine print, understand what it is you're signing up for. And also know when you're going shopping, you might get targeted for credit cards. So like a Kohl's card or a Victoria's Secret card or a Sam's card. All those things are credit cards, even though they might not seem like a credit card. And you'll still um, 
have to keep in mind the payments on those and you will still be required to uh, or that will still be counted into your um credit score so keep that in mind i don't think i mentioned this yesterday i think i forgot but something that is also important is knowing where your credit score falls and how that um affects your your credit score so like what is a good credit score so pretty much 300 to 629 is a bad score however keep in mind that just because you have a bad score doesn't mean you're necessarily going to um not get the things that you want or be viewed badly it just means you need to work on getting your credit score up um having an excellent score and a good score those are kind of the same thing you're not going to see a lot of change between good and excellent um and even having a fair score is not bad you just want to make sure that you're doing things that looks good on your credit. So like I said, making your payments on time, not having high debt, all of that um, good stuff. All right, so how to be a good roommate. So whether you are going to college in the fall or not, you are going to need to be a roommate at some point. You might not think of it right now, but you're kind of like a roommate to your parents if you're living at home. And there are a lot of good ways you can be a good roommate to your parents, to I feel like I have something on my face, to your actual roommates, to your siblings, all that good stuff. So one big thing that is important to be a good roommate is to discuss expectations ahead of time and establish basic rules. So I think a lot of times people will tell you this, but it's not always the best to live with your best friends. Um, because I think a lot of times you skip all of these things. So you think, oh, we're best friends. I know everything about them. We don't need to do all this stuff, but then it ends up going poorly because you didn't take these necessary steps. That happened to me in college when I moved off um, campus and me and my best friends all moved into a townhome together. Um, it was fun for a while and then things kind of started to get a little bit dramatic because we didn't do all of these things um, like we should have. So I definitely think you should do all these. And living with someone you don't know can be really fun. I mean, that person can end up being your best friend. So don't think you have to live with your best friends or um, people you've known forever right away. Sometimes rooming with a new person can be really good for you, but just make sure you're discussing expectations ahead of time, establishing some big basic rules. So for instance, if there's a shared space, maybe a certain time to turn the TV off, or maybe just knowing, you know, I'm more of a morning person, you're more of a night person. How can we kind of make that come together? Um, maybe you don't leave dishes in the sink. Um, maybe you've got like certain shelves in the fridge that are each other. I know that seems weird, but that can be helpful. Um, just establishing these like little basic rules of things so that way you guys both know um, what you're expecting of each other and when problems come up you're not saying well I didn't know you wanted me to do that because we never explained that expectation it's also very important to communicate clearly so obviously this is important for all relationships communication is key but when you're working with a roommate you really want to make sure that like when you make the expectations and the rules you don't want them to be like jumbled or um, not clear. You want to make sure they're clear. So establish some basic rules so that you guys are on the same page, but make sure they're communicated clearly. And also when a problem arises, like tell them about it, communicate it. So solve problems while they're still small. Communicate that problem very clearly. For instance, hey, I was trying to um, cook dinner tonight and there were dishes all over the kitchen. Um, could you please clean those up or would you clean them up? because while that seems like a small problem now, it will become a bigger problem um, over time if the person like never cleans up the kitchen. Also, they might not know that that problem bothers you until you bring it up and by then it will be too big of a problem. So they can't fix what they don't know is broken. So you need to let them know when these problems arise. For instance, like three nights in a row, if they have their boyfriend or girlfriend or whoever over and you never tell them that it bothers you that this person is eating all the food in the fridge or making messes or staying over, they don't know that's a problem. And then eventually you're gonna get frustrated about it. So you need to solve the problems while they're still small. Don't let them get too big and out of hand. Um, don't use roommate's items without permission. So this is a big one. I think it could probably go without saying, but I think it can be tempting to be like, oh, I'm out of milk. I'm just gonna use a little bit of their milk. They'll never know. Don't do that. Just text them and ask them if you need to borrow some milk or borrow an egg. Um, also, like, don't use, like, their Xbox or their PlayStation or whatever without their permission, because what if it breaks and you got to tell them you broke their expensive video gaming system or TV or whatever it is. Now, if your roommate, if you guys establish those expectations at the beginning that says, I don't mind if you use my Xbox when I'm not here, just make sure you do X, Y, and Z, that's fine, but that give, that's permission. You need to make sure you have permission to use your roommate's items. Don't just be using it willy-nilly 
Um, I really feel like that comes to food because a lot of times you're like, oh, they have pizza rolls. I don't have any pizza rolls. I'm just going to steal some. But what if they had a plan to like come home and they really wanted some pizza rolls and you ate all their pizza rolls? That's going to make them mad. So don't use any of their items without permission. Um, make sure you're being open-minded. So one thing that I think um, came not came across, but happened when I was living with my best friends is that even though I've known, I've known those girls since high school, like since we were freshmen, one girl I've known since kindergarten. So even though I've like lived, I've known them forever, I've never lived with them. And everyone is raised differently. Even the people that you go to high school with or go to college with or spend all your time with, they might've been raised differently. Like for instance, when I got a dog and I brought my dog to the house, I would just hook him up on a chain outside. I didn't walk him all the time. And one of my roommates was like, you never walk your dog. That's so lazy. Like you need to take your dog on walks. And I was like, well, I mean, I take him on walks sometimes, but I can't walk him all the time. And to her, that was a problem because when she was being raised, they walk their dogs every day. So I know that seems like a, a little silly thing, but those are just different expectations. I had one way I was raised with pets and that's how I just always thought people were with pets. She saw a different way and saw that like people that didn't do that was a problem. Now, was one of us right or one of us wrong? No, but that can cause problems because we see things differently. So you need to just be open-minded to differences in how people were raised. Some people might not, um, might've been raised in a house where they didn't clean the house very often. That just wasn't on their thing. It doesn't make them a dirty or bad person. That just was how they were raised. So be open-minded to um, new ways, new perspectives, new views, because chances are people were not raised exactly how you were. Now, backtrack, I have two dogs now and they do pretty much get walked almost every day. So I have kind of changed my viewpoint since then. Um, but just be open-minded when you're hearing new ways to do things or um, new ways to kind of live your life. But also know to compromise when necessary. So for instance, if you're a morning person and they're a night person, um, maybe don't get up at 5 a.m. and start blaring music. Maybe have like a set time, compromise on a time, or they shouldn't be staying up super late and blaring music in the open space either. So compromise on things when you need to. Um, clean up after yourself. I said that kind of earlier, but um, you know, don't leave a mess in the bathroom. Don't leave a mess in the kitchen. Like those shared spaces, make sure you're cleaning that up. And if you're the one that has people over, you have to, you're responsible for those people too. So clean up after them. So if you and your roommate decide it's okay to have friends over, that's great. But if you're the one that initiated those friends to come over, you should be responsible for cleaning up after them as well. And then finally, be respectful. So I, again, I feel like that's very obvious, but um, you want to make sure you're being respectful of their space and that they're being respectful of you. Um, that way, things just can work out better. Um, if you're not respecting the person or they're not respecting you, it's going to just be chaos in the house. And you don't want any more added stress when you're doing that. Stain tips. Yay, everyone loves doing laundry. So I don't know about you guys, but I've pretty much been doing laundry since I was old enough to do laundry. Um, but I was just doing like toss it in, detergent, maybe fabric softener, probably not, um, go. Dryer sheets, done. But now that I'm doing laundry more often and I'm drinking a lot of coffee and co I've been cooking a lot, so I've been getting a lot of grease stains, I did not know how to remove these stains. So I've been just searching, searching, searching how to remove these stains. I also have two dogs and I have carpet. So figuring out how to remove pet stains was a priority. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these because y'all are really great at reading and you are more than welcome to take a picture of this or a screenshot it or whatever. Y'all know how to Google too, so you can Google these, but just know um, that there are a lot of tips out there for different stains. The biggest thing I can say, and this is one that I'm still kind of bad at, is don't let the stain set in because it's harder to get it out. So like if you have a coffee stain on your shirt, try and like put something on it right away so the stain doesn't set because once they set, they're a lot harder to get out. Um, before I go to the next slide, I will say one thing. The picture at the top, that is of an actual um, college dorm laundry facility. And one thing you need to be mindful of is don't mess with other people's laundry. So when you go down there, do your laundry, but don't be messing with other people's laundry. Um, it's not very nice. You wouldn't want someone to take your clothes. It'd make you very upset. And if there's like stuff down there to use, um, don't use it without someone's permission. All right, budgets. So I actually really like talking about budgets because this is like one of my new nerdy things that I do. Um, I didn't used to, but I found it to be very important because I like to keep track of my money um, and I don't like to go spending it willy-nilly. That stresses me out. So one way you can keep a very simple budget is just to make a list of recurring payments. So payments that you make every month. So if you are on 
for instance, a payment plan for your tuition at school, you're gonna probably pay on that every month. So that's a recurring payment. If you are moving out of your parents' house and you are now living on your own in an apartment, you are gonna be paying rent. That is a recurring payment. Bills, recurring payment. Um, so you wanna list all of those out and then list your total incoming money. So if you work a part-time job, that will be money that comes in. Or if you work a full-time job, or um, maybe you get some kind of payment every month, that is income. So you want to list that out. Then you pretty much take all of those expenses and recurring payments and subtract it from your total income. Um, one thing you want to include in your, um, on your spreadsheet, so I said recurring payments, but you also should include things like groceries and fun stuff that, you, that you're paying, that you're thinking. And then if your expenses outweigh your income, you need to find a way to cut unnecessary spending. So if you are spending a ton of money at Starbucks or Chipotle, you might need to cut back on that. Or if you're seeing that your utility bill is really high, you might think, hmm, how could I save more electricity or how could I use less water, that kind of thing. Um, and then once you've kind of got that figured out, you can develop a saving strategy. So it's really important that you're saving money for your future. Um, particularly, you know, if you are taking out loans, you're gonna wanna pay those off. Um, you also, when you move away, you might want to get a nicer house or things of that nature. So it's just really good to save money. You also never know when an emergency is going to pop up and you're going to need some money saved away for that emergency. Um, one thing that I do for my budget is I use a Google sheet. So I'm like super nerdy about it, but I like to, um, do it by month. So I've got, you know, January, February, March, April, May, blah, 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 blah. And then I've got categories. So I've got like my income at the top. I've got like a recurring section. So it's got like my phone bill. That's the same every month. My rent payment. That's the same every month. Um, my utilities, which is different, but I put that in there because that's like a payment that's always happening every month. And then I've got a bunch of different columns. So I've got like entertainment. I've got like a food section where I have it partitioned off from like groceries, dining out, all that good stuff. Then I've got like clothes, I've got household materials. For mine, I have pets, because I have two pets. So I have all that stuff parsed out. And then what's great is it can do the math for me. So once I put my, once I get paid, I put my income in, I put all my bills in there, and then it'll show me how much money I have that will technically be saved for um, the next time. And what's great about that is you can see where your money's going. So one thing I've recently been doing is trying to spend less on groceries and food. So I can see how much every month I'm spending. And something that can be kind of fun is seeing if you can spend less in that category the next month than you did the month before, if that makes sense. Um, but if you guys want help with budgeting, um, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I can send you what I know and what I've learned. The biggest thing I can say is just go to Google. If you just Google, um, Google Sheets budget template, you'll find a ton, or Excel sheet bubble budget templates, you'll find a ton. Um, but one quick thing that can be helpful is the 50-20-30 rule, or the 50-30-20 rule, or however you want to think about it. But 50% of your income and your money should go to um, your essentials. So like your rent, your bills, your food, things that you need, you have to pay and that you need to survive. 30% can go to fun stuff. So for instance, I think I said that right, yeah. So for instance, like going out or movies or um, clothes or things of that nature. And then 20% should go to savings. So for, for example, if you have $100, because that's just easy math, uh, $50 of that should go to your essentials, $30 of that can go to entertainment, and $20 of that you should save away. Um, like I said earlier, it's really important that you are saving money now um, rather than later. It's never too early to save. Um, and it's never too little. So even if it's just $5, at the end of the year, you'll have at least $60 saved. So save money however you can, whatever makes sense to you, whether it's pulling from one account into a savings account or just putting aside $5 every week or whatever it may be. Um, but definitely try to find a plan to save money. All right, car maintenance tips. So I included some random things in here because I didn't really want to do just, in my opinion, boring finance stuff. Um, so I thought car maintenance was something different. I know when I went away to college, my freshman year, I didn't bring my car, but my sophomore year I did, and I lived two hours away from my house. Um, so I needed to do some of the car stuff on my own. To this day, I still have to search how to jump a car. I've jumped my car many times. I've jumped other people's cars, but I still have to search it to make sure I do it right. Um, so maybe having like a screenshot of jumping a car would be good. I'll show you guys the tips for that in a second. But just knowing a few of these little basics to make sure that your car runs longer and stays in good shape can be important. 
So check the oil regularly. It's pretty easy. Lift the hood, find out where your um, oil container is. It usually will have the symbol on it. You'll want to open it up, pull out the dipstick, wipe the dipstick off, stick it back in, pull it out again, and then you can check your level. Um, you'll want, if you look at this little picture on here that's got the little sad two frowny faces and the smiley face, that's just showing you where it will be. And when you have the dipstick, it'll show it on there, like minimum, maximum. And you want to make sure you're right in that range. You don't want it to be too full because that means your car is not using the oil properly. And you don't want it to be too low because that means your car is burning oil too fast. So, or that it might need more oil. So make sure you're checking that. Understand your warning light indicator. So, you know, like check engine, check oil, all that good stuff. Check your tire pressure. So this can be super easy. Um, a lot of times you can get this little stick thing that you just would pop on the tire and it'll pop out the pressure. And you know what your tire pressure is because if you open the door of your car, it's usually listed on a sticker on the inside part of your car um, door. So check that and make sure those are right. And if they're not right, you might need to go get some free air or figure out if there's a leak in your tires, that kind of thing. You don't want to be driving and it just pop a tire on the highway because that is scary and that is dangerous. Um, rotate your tires and have alignment checked often. So this is something that's a, not, I wouldn't say expensive, but if you're a college student trying to like pinch your pennies, this can be a little bit on the pricier side. So if you're, um, if someone already like handles car stuff for you, that's great. If not, just make sure you're keeping that in mind when you're budgeting that you're going to need to make that expense. Um, check your engine coolant level. So especially in the summer, this is important. Um, it will also be just, like I said, under your hood, you'll be able to find it cause it'll have a little special symbol on it. You just open it up, check and see how um, minimum or maximum. So kind of like that picture at the bottom and make sure that it is at least at the minimum or in that range. Um, engine coolant is actually pretty, pretty affordable. So you can find it at like Walmart or any like car parts store. It's very affordable. If you're running low, just make sure you add some in. You don't want your engine to overheat, especially when you're out in the hot, because then you'll be stuck on the side of the road and it'll be hot and it'll suck. Um, know how to jump your car and how to jump another car, which I will show in a second, um, because that is very important. Cars, batteries sometimes just can be finicky and they might die and you'll want to know how to jump it. Again, so you're not hot on the side of the road. Um, and lastly, this is something I never thought of. This might sound dumb or silly or weird, but when I first got a car, like 16, I didn't even think that windshield wipers would be something I would ever need to replace. For whatever reason, I'm thinking they just last forever. Well, they don't. They can get very worn out. They can get very um, low and they can get stuck and all kinds of things can happen. So you want to make sure that they are working right. And if you notice that they're getting slow or they're not working how they should, um, you want to go and get those changed. They're actually pretty easy to get changed. Um, you can buy them also at Walmart and change them yourself. But you just want to make sure they're performing um, right because you don't want to be in a downpour, thunderstorm, snowstorm, and they're not working because that is dangerous. So make sure you're checking those. This is um, changing a car tire. So this can be obviously very important. If you don't have AAA and you're stuck on the side of the road and you need to change your tire, the biggest thing I will say is that the... Um, and now I work out every day. I'm not seeing a little weakling, but the bolts sometimes can be really tight and hard to get off. So you might need help getting the bolts off. But even more importantly, if you can get them off, you might not be strong enough to tighten them all the way. So what I would say is tighten them as far as you can. Um, make sure they're super tight. Get to wherever it is you're going to. And then when you get there, see if someone can tighten them all the way for you or even go simply to like a Jiffy Lube or somewhere quick and see if they can get them tightened for you because you don't want it to fall off or be loose. Um, uh, I know a lot of times people think that they're on as tight and then the person comes and they can like make it go a lot more. So just make sure they're tight. Um, I'm not going to go through all these steps. Y'all are very smart. Y'all know how to Google. Like I said earlier, you can take a screenshot of this or take a picture. Um, but just know that these are things you should know as far as car maintenance goes. And it's also very important to know how to um, jump your car and um, jump someone else's car. That can be very helpful. All righty. So a sample fall bill. Fun stuff. I bring this up because um, while it is not fall, it is very much July, fall bills become due around this time. This is when they send them out and they start to be due and people are like, wait, I have to pay for school before I ever even go. Yes, I know it's crazy. You've got to pay for college before you even step foot on the campus. It's weird, but that's how it works. So you will want to check your fall bill. A lot of times I think these are mailed, but sometimes it might go to your school email. Um, sometimes it might just be posted to your online portal account. So check there, look it over, make sure everything looks right. Um, we're going to go through some of the numbers of this sample fall bill, but um, all schools kind of do their fall bill a little differently, but they all have things that are pretty similar. 
So I'm not going to go through all of these numbers, as you can see on the slide, but I'm going to go through the ones that are important. So for instance, this little cluster is tuition and fees for the fall semester. So you'll see it says fall 2017, and then it's got fees and tuition. A lot of times when students think of school, they think they're just going to be paying for tuition, and that is like never the case. You always have like a technology fee, or a health fee, or a rec center fee, or all these fees. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're thinking about school and how the payments will break down. You're going to have to pay for some fees. Um, if you're living on campus, you'll pay for room and board, and there will be more fees for that. And then if you're living on campus, they usually require you buy some kind of dining plan. So that will be included on your fall bill. So make sure if you are living on campus that you're seeing your room and board on there and you're seeing your dining plan. Because if you're not seeing it on there, they might not know that you're living on campus. Something might have gone wrong with your housing, and so you're going to want to get that figured out. Um, credits already applied to your account. So you'll see current credits. So this will show. Um, and let me back up. So like I said earlier, not all schools do it the same. So it might be partialed out like it might show charges, then credits, then balance. But just know that these components should all be somewhere on your bill. Credits already applied. It's just going to be like scholarships, grants, payments that were already made. So things that they've already received from you or that they've already applied to your account. So on this one, you'll see that they have a, a grant from Penn and looks like a payment. Um, then you'll have your build balance. So this is the balance after all of that that's still remaining um, when they subtract the credits from the charges. So that's the money that is still owed. And then you will see um, 10 shows uh, per, or anticipated funding that hasn't yet been applied. So for instance, this says the Pell Grant, which some of you might be receiving. Um, it might not have been applied to the bill yet. Maybe they haven't finished all the paperwork or gotten everything received for it yet, but it is expected to be applied to your bill. So um, just know that. And then um, I didn't talk about this yesterday, but I'm going to talk about it today. You'll see how it shows this um, installment payment plan for the fall. So this person got a um, payment plan. So they're making payments of four, eight, two, one, and sixty-two cents. Um, three times it looks like over the semester. Payment plans are something you can sign up for at your campus if you can't make the full payment, but you'll need to think about that ahead of time and reach out to your financial aid department that you want to do that. But when they're balance is showing their total amount due. So even after their payment plan, they still owe money. So you'll see um, 12, this one down here, total amount due. That is a total amount due on their fall bill that they will owe by this due date. So you'll see it says July 25, 2017. I know it isn't 2017 now, it's definitely 2020, but due dates are still going to be due in the next like week or two for these fall bills. I know that sounds crazy, but August is almost here and you've got to pay for school before you get there. And a lot of times when these are not paid on time, you will incur fees or they will drop you from your classes. You don't want that to happen. So make sure you're looking over your fall bill, you're understanding everything. And if not, let me know, I'll help you or the College Connection Center can help you. We can review your bill with you. We can help you figure out where to find it at. But you just want to make sure that you are understanding um, what your fall bill means and how much you are still going to owe after everything has been applied. All right, paying bills. I'm not going to go super in depth on this. It's so funny because I said this yesterday when I did it. It says set up AutoPaw. And I remember when I was talking to the students yesterday, I was like, oh, I made a mistake. Could have corrected it for today because I'm re recording the presentation, but I forgot. But that's supposed to be AutoPay. And so a lot of you probably haven't paid bills before. Maybe you do. Maybe you pay bills in your car. Or maybe you pay your own cell phone. But I'm just going to briefly go through this just for some knowledge for people that maybe haven't. So choose either e-statements or paper statements. I'm a big e-statements fan. I don't want to be getting papers into my house. I'm just going to look at it and throw it away in the recycling, and that's annoying. So don't send me paper. I'm trying to save the trees out here. So pick whatever works best for you. Um, and then set up auto, -paw, auto pay if you're able. Um, so what that means is just have it automatically deducted. That way you won't miss a due date. So I like to have all my bills just automatically taken out. Um, again, that also ties into my spreadsheet that I mentioned earlier. It just makes things so much easier. I don't have to sit there and wonder if I'm going to miss it or if I'm going to make it on time or all of that stuff. If you're not able to set up auto pay because maybe you are, you know, living kind of paycheck to paycheck or budget to budget, that is fine. I totally get it. I've been there. Don't worry about it. Just make sure you know when all the due dates are. So um, you'll want to create a phone calendar, reminders for bill due dates on your phone, whatever you need to do. Um, write due dates down. Maybe you get a big calendar, write it down on the calendar. That way you don't miss them because a lot of them will have late fees. Um, also check if online bill pay is an option. So I like pay all my bills online. Everything's on auto pay. Um, some people don't like that. I know my aunt is still like writing checks and like sending 
checks in the mail, which is just like blowing my mind. I'm like, she doesn't even do online banking, which is just the weirdest thing to me, but whatever. Totally different story. Um, but make sure you know of any fees. So for instance, when I first moved off campus and lived in a townhome, you could pay rent online on the like uh, resident portal, but it costs like a 10% fee to your credit card or something, which was ridiculous. I'm like, I'm not trying to pay more money. I just don't want to walk up to the office to pay it. So a lot of times I just ended up walking up to the office because I'm like, I don't want to pay this extra money. So keep in mind the cost of paying bills. So obviously you're going to know what your bill costs, but you also need to know like, what is it costing me to pay these bills? Stamps, fees, is there any interest? Are there late fees? All of that. Make sure you know all about that before you make your plan to pay the bills. Um, check your bills regularly for any errors. So as I mentioned earlier, um, if I got a paper statement, I probably would just recycle it. But a lot of times I do actually go back through and like look them over. So even when I get an E statement, I might not look at it right that minute, but I still want to look at it later to make sure that I'm not getting overcharged or they're not adding on new fees to my bill, um, particularly with your utility bill. So sometimes like if you look at your bill, you're like, oh my gosh, why do we use so much water this month? Like you're we hardly home or we didn't even take that many showers and wash that clo the clothes that much. There could be like a leak or they could have read the meter wrong. So many things could have happened. So you want to review the bills to make sure there are any errors. And if there are errors, you want to reach out to whoever it is to correct those errors. Like I said earlier, be aware of late fees or things that may change your bill. So um, for instance, let's say something goes on with your utilities and they like make a change to your bill. You'll want to be aware of that. Um, understand payment plans and minimum payments. So sometimes even for utilities, you can just make a minimum payment. You might not need to pay it in full, but just know that you're probably going to get charged interest and that that money's not going to go away. You're just going to owe more next time. So just be aware of all that kind of stuff. All right. Coffee tips and tricks. This calls for a sip of coffee. I told this story yesterday. I'm going to tell it again today because I love it. When I went away to college, um, they had these cute little like packages at Walmart. I want to say it was probably like a box and it had all these fun little like dorm room appliances in it and they were all one color and I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. I had green because green's my favorite color. Um, I had a green iron, a green toaster. I feel like there was four or five items, but I'm only remembering three. A green iron, a green toaster, and a green five cup little coffee cup ma coffee maker and I loved it because it was perfect for me I didn't have to feel like I made like this whole big pot of coffee every day um, I could just make a little bit of coffee at a time and that's going to save you money so if you are a coffee drinker or you anticipate becoming a coffee drinker I was just getting a five cup programmable drip coffee maker um, drip coffee is still pretty good I like it I make drip coffee every day um, but you can also use it to make hot water for tea so it'll still heat up water for tea which is nice um and a programmable one it's not necessary but it can be nice because you can set it to brew at like 6 a.m 7 a.m whatever so coffee's ready when you wake up which is great um and then if you need to know the coffee to water ratio so maybe someone else has always made coffee for you or you always go to starbucks or you always go to wherever you get your coffee um know these ratios and kind of play around with it because people like different strengths of different coffee um but i think i don't i don't think back on it I didn't think about it then because I've had coffee for a long time, but it can be kind of difficult making your first pot and not knowing the right ratios, especially if you like use a certain tool every time and that tool measures it for you. So just be aware of the ratios. You don't want to be like way overdoing your coffee and you get a tummy ache in the middle of your class and you got to like dart out of there real quick, if you know what I mean. You can also make cold brew. So I'm a big fan of cold brew. I actually have like a pitcher thing that's got a little inside part and you can put the coffee in it, but you can mimic that process right in your dorm room with a mason jar. So you'll get some really good beans. Um, you wanna give them a coarse ground. So you don't want them to be like tiny, tiny, tiny. You want them to be kind of chunky, but you do wanna grind them up so that the beans open up and you get that coffee flavor. Um, so you'll put the coffee into a jar, put some cold filtered water in it. I like filtered water, I think it tastes better. For coffee reasons. Um, if not, you can use any water. It really doesn't matter. Um, and then you'll let it sit overnight or even up to 24 hours. And then what you want to do is strain out the coffee over a strainer or it could be a filter or cheesecloth into another jar and that will be your cold brew. Um, it'll usually last in your fridge for about a week or two. So that's kind of nice. Um, if it's too strong, you can always dilute it with water. So some people like to make it really strong and then use it more as like coffee brew or cold brew concentrate, um, which can be great. But um, if that's something you want to do, especially in August and September when it's still kind of hot out, that can be nice. Um, a good thing to do, a good rule of thumb, is to get a good travel mug to take coffee with you to class. So um, you can brew it in the morning, pop it in your travel mug, head out to class. Or 
if you go to like your dining hall, sometimes they'll let you fill up your travel mug in the dining hall. So you can do that, which is great. And then also look for coffee shops with student discounts in your area. So um, if you really need, you know, your Starbucks fix on Friday or you want to treat yourself, go somewhere that might have a discount. Um, I know Starbucks, I think Starbucks does student discounts. It might not be very big, but um, there are also a lot of local shops like in um, college towns that will do student discounts. So look out for that. Alrighty, so we made it to our last slide. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Um, but maintaining your health is super important. Originally, I didn't have this slide on there, um, but I added it on Wednesday morning before the original presentation, because I think this is a really important part of adulting, and especially if you're moving away and you've never had to, you know, make your own doctor's appointment, or maybe you've never taken care of yourself and you've gotten a cold. You've always had someone there to help you. Um, this can be important. So. The very first thing on here is get sleep. And I know a bunch of people are like, but it's college. College kids don't sleep. We pull all nighters. We stay up all night. No, we don't. Well, I say we. No, they don't. You need to get adequate sleep. If you're not getting adequate sleep and you're feeling like you're staying up all night, it's because you're not getting what you need to get done during the day. Um, I'm not going to lie to you guys and say college is a cakewalk because it's not. It's going to take a lot of restructuring and you're going to have to figure things out. And you might be really tired. You might be really stressed out. But if you plan out your schedule correctly and do um, appropriate time management, there's no need for you to stay up all night. Even if you're like, I've got a huge exam tomorrow. Cramming doesn't help. Pull, pulling all nighters to study doesn't help. Sleep is way more important. Get your sleep. Also stay hydrated. So if you're picturing your backpack, you know, they've got those little holders on the side. You've got your travel mug of coffee here. Put your water bottle here, take a water bottle to class. It will be important. You'll have water all the time. You don't have to worry about it. Um, it's great and you wanna stay hydrated. You don't wanna be getting a headache and adding on to your stress. Um, try to eat healthy. So I know it's college. I'm not gonna say like eat healthy all the time. Um, you wanna enjoy that local pizza or if, call it, if campus is having like a free brownie day or whatever, you wanna enjoy that. But try to eat a little bit healthier. Um, College can be a weird time because you might be doing all this new fun stuff. And so it can be hard to um, maintain your weight. The freshman 15 is real, y'all. I'm just saying. So if you can try to eat healthy now and then, that will help. I know when I was in college, I loved my dining hall, but it was all you can eat. And woof, it was hard to resist some things. Um, for instance, I know salad sounds healthy, but I would make these like giant salads and like load stuff on like pepperonis, cheese, sunflower seeds, croutons, tomatoes, onions, dressing, like load that on. And then after my salad, I would still eat more when that salad is probably a meal in and of itself. So just keep that kind of stuff in mind. Um, know where the rec center is. So even some community colleges have rec centers where you can like work out or play ping pong or sometimes they have pools you can swim in or cool little spa rooms if you need to de-stress. So know where that is, go visit it. Have a blast. You're paying for it in your fees anyway, so you might as well use it. Um, but also keep your doctor's appointments. So if you are someone that's moving away for college, but your mom is still making you doctor's appointments or you still have doctor's appointments, keep those. Don't like disregard those because when you move away to college, you're kind of in a new um, ecosystem, a new area where there might be new germs and things. And so it's really important that you're still getting checked out by your doctor. I think um, especially now during the pandemic, it's really important that we are um, seeing our doctor. So if you can do virtual visits with your primary care physician, that's great. But make sure you're keeping those appointments. Don't just like disregard them or um, make plans to forget them. A, a trick that I think a lot of students do is they will do their doctor's appointments back home, like over winter break when they are home. Um, so they don't have to worry about like making a bunch of trips back and forth. Um, but also find your campus health center and know their information. So when you do get a cold, um, you can call. A lot of times they have helplines where a nurse or someone can go through your symptoms with you without you necessarily having to make an appointment. Now, if there is something, a bigger issue, you can make an appointment. Again, a lot of times you pay for the health center with your fees, so you might as well use it if you need it. Um, but know like their after hour calls, where they're located, all that good jazz. Um, consider getting the flu shot. So I added this on here because when you're on campus, like I said earlier, you're just with a bunch of new people. They come from all over. Usually you're pretty close together, although this fall we're supposed to be social distancing. So we'll see what that's like. I don't know. But you should consider getting the flu shot. A lot of campuses will um, provide it for free or have like flu shot drives. So you'll want to do that um, because college campuses can be kind of germy. Um, not that they're dirty. They're doing a great job of cleaning everything. But when you just have that many people in a space, it can be 
easy to pass along germs. So just be aware of that. And then lastly, you know, utilize the counseling center and the wellness center. So most campuses have some kind of counseling, whether it be a community college, um, a lot of even tech and trade schools have counseling, um, resources and things. So utilize that. Even if you're not someone that really thinks they need counseling, just go check it out. See what kind of pamphlets they have, what kind of stuff. Again, you're paying for it in your fees anyways, even though you might not realize it. So you should utilize it. You don't want to use, you don't want to pay for something you're not going to use. Um, counseling centers also can be a good place to get tips on like, combating stress or anxiety or things of that nature. So just go check it out. Like I said, pick up some pamphlets. And then the wellness center, um, if your campus is a wellness center, they could be great too because they will do things um, to kind of like help your overall wellness. So they might have like meditation sessions or massage chairs or stress busting activities, things of that nature. So definitely check both of those out. They can be um, very helpful in helping you get through college um, healthy and successfully. Now you'll see on here some health insurance basics. I don't wanna go through all of these, um, but if you are getting put on a new health insurance, maybe now that you're moving away, your parents want you to get your own insurance or you're going through your college's insurance, just make sure you understand how all of that works, understand deductible, copay, co-insurance, out-of-pocket pay limit, know what kind of things your insurance covers and doesn't cover. Um, typically when you turn 26, you have to get a new insurance. So Many of you should be far away from that, but just keep that in mind. Take a picture of it if you want, but I'm sure y'all can Google these terms. All right, so yesterday I asked for questions because I had people on the Zoom, but today I'm literally just recording it. So if you do have questions, you can always send them to me, um, text me, DM me. Um, maybe there's an adulting topic that you're curious about, or um, maybe there's something that I said that made you have, think of questions, so send them my way. But send me your literal questions because what I would like to do is either next Wednesday or the Wednesday after, I would like to do a college Q&A. So I really want to get your guys' thoughts and your guys' questions um, and come up with the answers for them. So you can text them to me, you can email them to me, you can DM them to um, my social media or the College Connection Center social media. But I wanna get those questions that are like, maybe like hard to Google, like, um, what is it really like being in a college class or what do college lectures feel like or how do I take notes in college? Um, you know, those questions that like are kind of like hard to Google and you really need someone that has like been in college to answer them, send them my way. Um, I'm hoping to do it either next Wednesday or the Wednesday after. I might also do it at a different time. Um, if there's a time that works better for you guys and you really want to be there want to participate in it live, um, let me know that. But I really, really, really want to answer your guys' questions because the reason I do these webinars, I love giving presentations. I love talking to students. But the reason I do the webinars is to give you guys important information. And so I want to know what important information it is that you need so that I'm providing the best information for you. So please send those my way. Otherwise, I hope to um, see you guys soon, interact with you soon, whether it be via text or um, in the next webinar, or if you wanna drop into advising hours, um, you can do that. We will help you with your questions or verification or help you figure out how to get enrolled. Um, we can do all of that. So just reach out one of these ways and we will get you the help we need. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and hop off. I appreciate you guys watching this. Um, send me your questions so I can get the Q&A session started. And hope to see you soon. Stay safe and healthy.